Good evening. I will call the curriculum committee meeting to order and we will begin with public comment. The Penridge School Board welcomes public comment. According to policy 903, we remind everyone of the following. Public comment shall be limited to three minutes unless otherwise specified by the board. Participants must be recognized by the presiding officer and note their name and municipality. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer rather than to individual board members, district employees, or members of the public. A speaker may speak once during each comment period. Please note that these sessions are designated for comments. To protect the confidentiality and privacy rights of all members of our community, the board encourages members of the public to direct any comments regarding particular individuals, such as students or district employees, privately to the superintendent or other appropriate administrators or board members, or to communicate with the board and superintendent privately by sending an email to psdschoolboard at penridge.org. Questions raised and not addressed may be followed up at a later time. And so I have one, Mrs. Furlong, you're signed up for public comment. I am. Sue Furlong, West Rockville Township. I signed up because I want to speak about what happened at the last meeting in terms of the discussion for class rank and the possible elimination of that particular reward to our excellent students. We talk a lot about SEL, social emotional learning, and we toss out big words like dignity, respect, dependability, reliability, honesty, lots of words. But our excellent students go beyond words and take actions that make them the best. That doesn't happen by accident. I didn't graduate at the top of my class, and I well deserve not to. But the people who did, I knew all along, they were working a lot harder than I was. And they deserved some recognition. And they got it. And I was happy for them. Um, why don't, instead of words, we teach that actions have consequences. If you work hard, there is a reward for you. If you do not work hard, there is no reward for you. There is no such thing as a level playing field out in the real world. Why should it exist within these walls and fool our students into believing there is such a thing? We, the one sentence that really got me, and I'm sort of paraphrasing here, it said, the class rank may put a student at a disadvantage and make him feel bad because he has overly competitive peers. In that one statement, you are taking personal accountability. And instead of the person who didn't perform reaping the correct consequence, it's not his fault. It's the kid that tried real hard and worked real hard's fault that he's at the bottom. I can't believe I'm hearing this. And that peer that worked really hard took the time to figure out what it would take to get to the top. And he was criticized at the last meeting because he's savvy. That's evil, it's being savvy. In the workplace, your boss wants you to figure out what do you need to do to make your boss happy and when he asks question one, if you're smart, you will be savvy and think, what will question two, three, and four be? And you get those answers before you walk into his office. That's savvy. That's figuring out the system. That's the real world. And our students who do that should be rewarded. Now, real quick, I'm not gonna be here that long. You're taking away a reward. You're taking away a measurement that an outside admissions office can use. 
right now, our high school's performance um, profile, school performance profile, sits at 74. If an admissions office looks at our neighboring districts, they're all up in the mid 80s to the low 90s. We qualify with Bristol and Ben Salem. So our student doesn't get much advantage coming out of Penridge right at the moment. Hope that changes. Our students also, if you look at our neighboring districts, our average SAT scores for reading and math are the lowest. And now we're going to take away another measure, class rank, where at least maybe the top 10% can have an advantage at an admissions office. This is disgusting. And this shifting of blame and criticizing our excellent students is regrettable at the least. Okay, thank you for your comment. We do have a class rank on the agenda this evening to discuss. No one else was signed up for public comment. Mr. Foster, you want to comment? Thank you. Thanks, I forgot to sign up on the sheet. Kevin Foster, Hilltown Township. So I just wanted to talk briefly about um, the seventh grade curriculum improvement plan that was talked about extensively back in, I believe, I don't have the whole history written down, but back in February, uh, March, again at a full board meeting in April. Uh, subsequently, it was referenced that it would be back on the agenda uh, in the next curriculum meeting, which actually is tonight, and I noticed it wasn't. And then I had heard and had seen online too, there, there's, there was some dialogue and some clarification provided by the board regarding other opportunities that have been, have been identified by the administration. So I just wanted to rehash, we, we've heard about you know, concerns with the previous book being better from the board. We've also heard concerns about ensuring that the textbook and the curriculum improvement plan follow the appropriate process that the board has put in place. We heard that back in April. And now it seems that uh, it's missing from the agenda with some additional clarification regarding uh, other options that um, Dr. Scheib and some, some folks are investigating. So I was curious, what are those options? How do they differ from the original uh, curriculum improvement plan that was recommended by the administration previously? What's the reason for them changing? And I'm hoping, you know, I can just understand and you can provide the community a little bit more clarity as to the, the process that went into deciding, you know what, we're going to go back to the drawing board and reassess other potential options. So I'm hoping that the board can provide some clarity into, uh, into the decision-making process for that. Thank you. Thank you. So anyone else that would like to make a comment? Okay. If not, I will say that um, Dr. Scheid and her team have discovered other options that they want to explore and they brought that to us and asked us to hold off on having the seventh grade social studies curriculum improvement plan on this month's agenda. So when Dr. Scheid and the team are ready, which I guess would that be next month, Dr. Scheid, you suppose, or? Mrs. Gahn, we typically don't have a curriculum meeting in July, but we may have to do that because at this time we're not fully prepared to give you the community, the community all of those answers, but we hope to before the start of the school year so that we can make the purchases of whichever decision we come to. And so Mr. Foster, that's where those um, different options would be explained is in their presentation. So if we have that in July, you could come back to the community and that, or look it up online on our board docs if you can't make it. Okay, so then we will go into the agenda. The first item is the textbook approval for band in grades four through eight, and that is with Mrs. Werner. Good evening. I uh, want to ask, am I to go ahead and uh, project the proposal? Yes, I, I see where it is. I believe um, I'm second down to the right where it says textbook. Yes, that is correct. Okay, looks like we're set. The proposal that I am submitting tonight is to change the method book used for our band program in grades four to eight from Accent on Achievement to the Sound Innovation Series. 
What inspired the search for a new series was the desire to find a band method book whose pacing better meets the needs of fourth and fifth grade beginner students and whose sequence of concepts, visual appeal, and accessories are an improvement overall from the series we currently use. The current series, Accent on Achievement, has been in use in our band program since the early 2000s. We are asking for a set of Sound Innovations books, one and two, and the teacher manual for each elementary building and middle school. If you have any questions about the proposal, I'd be happy to answer them now. Mrs. Warner, the um, copyright date is 2011. Uh, typically, our copyright dates are much more recent than that. Um, is there a reason why this has not been updated, or that there isn't a more current book? So the Sound Innovations book copyright date is 2011. Um, I think that having a book that within the past seven years is a pretty good, because you don't want to just get a book the year it comes out, because you want to see that teachers have tested it and that it's a book that's working with their students and that you can already have kind of that affirmation from others. So the fact that it is pretty current compared to our other book, like I said, we've been using Accent on Achievement at least since the early 2000s. Sixth grade was still in our elementary buildings. Um, so this is one of the newer band textbooks to come out and the fact that um, if you see on the second page of the proposal, we've listed a number of school districts that are currently using this book. So it kind of gives a testament to us that our other music educators have tried it, it's successful with their students. And so while that is, you know, not as, you know, it's not a 2018 book, um, I do like that it has had some time to be proven. I didn't know that there would be different methods of teaching. Sure. <laughs> so that is a, I'm glad you asked that question, Dr. Arno. Does anyone else have any other questions? So is everybody okay with moving it to the board meeting? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, and the next item on the agenda is the service learning pilot results and recommendations with uh, Ms. Mary Lou Ashford. Um, good evening, everyone. I am Mary Lou Ashworth, the librarian at Central Middle School and the High School Service Learning Club advisor. Um, I did my presentation using that Simon Sinek that why, how, what model, because a lot of times I do that with my students. So, and I thought it fit well with giving this presentation to the curriculum committee. So um, I also added the who, so that you could be informed with who the service learning club was designed for. So it was designed originally in its pilot phase for the high school, and there was a little bit of an intention to target some key club and National Honor Society students in the original um, thought, I think. And then why it came to be was they were listed there. It was an original goal in the comprehensive plan. My understanding was there was a small task force that had former employees like Dr. Phillips and um, Mrs. Drabeck, and then I think Dr. Shadu took over to look at the concept of having service as part of a Penridge High School graduation requirement. And the feedback was they weren't gonna go in that direction, but they were going to try to do something more with service in the high school, thereby piloting a club and see how that club would go. And then again, as the district SEL driving team, it was a goal coming out of there as a way to build some character, some grit, and um, service learning should be connected to real life learning. And so how it got off the ground was um, the pilot was recommended to the board and approved. And then they, 50 students was the number that, no more than 50 students in the pilot year. Reflection should be part of the club. And then consider were we going to have something like a Penridge Service Scholar, some other form of recognition for the students who consistently 
um, if the pilot went on and on, consistently um, participated in over a number of years, and they um, were looking for an advisor, and that was me. I think I was the only applicant. <laughs> I got the job. So uh, they hired me in the summer of 2017. So I came in in the summer and did some work. Primarily, I started doing some work with the um, Key Club and National Honor Society advisors, who quite frankly were surprised. They had well over 325 participants in Key Club and more than that in Honor Society, and they weren't understanding um, how I would be different. So I kind of went back to the drawing board, Dr. Scheib, uh, Michelle Burkhart and said, I, you know, I need to be different and I don't want to just offer kids something. So we tried to see if we could promote the club to like tech school or maybe students who weren't in um, National Honor Society and Key Club. We certainly weren't going to close it to them, but I was going to see if I could drum up some business in some other ways, which I did. I, I did try to do a number of things and however, I, most of my kids were on Key Club and Honor Society although not all of them. And I did in the, originally get a couple of kids from that tech school come on board with me. So, um, you know, in the beginning, I did all of the things to get off the ground that, I, you know, I don't teach in the high school, but I came to sign up club. I had posters made. I, um, you know, tapped older brothers and sisters like, ah, tell your sister about this club. It's gonna be great. And they're gonna get to work with me. And they love me, even if they forget, they do. And they should see me. You're laughing because I probably told your kid that. Um, and so I, I did have a great response originally. I had about uh, 45 to 50 kids sign up and a couple of kids at the high school. I went out there a number of times to see if I could, you know, at lunchtime generate some business. But um, in the end, I had 24 kids who actually completed the paperwork. And I did some in circle, um, some surveying. And one of the things that um, I did differently was that I would always be where they would be doing service because one of the things I found out in my investigation is um, a number of places are interested in students volunteering but not unsupervised students. They really want an adult who is directing and supervising and responsible for the students. So in surveying the bulk of my club, they really wanted to do something with animals. I made a connection at um, Last Chance Ranch and that's where we decided to do our Penridge service. So we did all the orientation permission slips and went out there every single month and volunteered from um, 8 to 11.30. And, and they were there by 8.30. But in the end, in the beginning, I had a huge turnout, probably close to 20 kids. But then as the year went on and kids got more heavily scheduled, SAT, prom, the only month we didn't go was December. And other than that, we were at Last Chance Ranch the third um, Saturday of every month. And I think the kids that did it got a great deal out of it. They loved it. I surveyed them. I had some trouble getting reflection. They didn't seem to be interested in reflecting with me every time they, you know, they just volunteered, cleaned out cages, um, you know, shovel uh, dog, you know, poop. They were not interested in writing about it, you know. And so um, I do think that, you know, it was a well. They got a lot of value at it, and they reported back on a final survey that I, you know, really uh, pressed on them and asked them, please, to just fill it out. I needed some feedback. And um, we did also have a food drive, and we had a book club, a uh, book drive. That was something that the students asked me to do. So I had a little competition between the high school, and I ran it at my middle school. I got, I'm sorry to say, about 12 canned goods out of the high school, and I got about 900 pounds out of the middle school. The book drive was a little better received at the high school, and, and kids reported, frankly, they just didn't know I was doing it, but I don't know how they didn't know. I was giving posters, I was on the rumble, I had my kids talk to all their friends. Um, so we didn't only do that, we also did a book drive and a food drive, and um, so I, I did get student feedback. They reported things like they did feel they you know, impacted their community in a positive way, it made them think of others. They didn't know that Last Chance Ranch was there, and one or two of my kids did go back and independently um, volunteer at Last Chance Ranch on their own. So my recommendations going forward is, I honestly think the club is a bit redundant at the high school. Um, I don't think, I think it's much more 
um, necessary and um, would really get off the ground in the middle school and in the way that we've moved National Honor Society, National Honor Society Junior to the middle school, I'd really love to move this club to the middle schools. I think it has a real value there and a place there. Um, so um, when I went back and did some real investigating about kids being interested in being called a Penridge Service Scholar, they reported they weren't that interested. They really were interested in being a Key Club Scholar because that had national recognition on their transcripts and to colleges. And when I had, I do have a few friends who have, you know, a brother or sister who works in admissions and Steph and I asked and they said it wouldn't hurt them, but they don't, a college wouldn't know what a Penridge Service Scholar was. So unless there was a way of identifying that, it probably would kind of be a neutral thing. Maybe a little positive, but not really an impact. So my recommendation moving forward is um, go the pilot again, and then um, for 2018 and 19, but try it in the middle school, and take a look at the key club has, I think it's called bookends, which is something moving it into the middle school and follow some of those guidelines. Questions? So you would, do you think you'd be able to, so you would do that bookends thing as opposed to having a Penridge service learning group? Could you? I think I would, I would meet with the um, Key Club and National Honor Society and see that, make sure that the kids that we are, you know, equipping in the middle school will be well tooled to fit into Key Club. And I don't, I, don't, um, I did meet with Bob um, Hip, once upon a time when I was looking at doing, I knew I wanted to do some kind of community service, and it is a real formal program, so I'm not sure I could do it in this, you know, you have to petition, there's a lot of things that you have to do, but that would be something I would definitely look at and make sure is that something that we want to do. But I need to first get board approval to move the service club to the middle school level, and then I will go from there. Like, if, you know, I certainly would think that's the way that I would go, unless there'd be some reason that we wouldn't want to be the exact formal thing in the bookend. I think it's called bookends. Uh, and so would you be able to do all three middle schools or do you think you'd need someone to help? I think you'd need an advisor in all three school, middle right? schools because honestly and sincerely, I think that I would work with those advisors or you know, we would co-facilitate because if I'm going to be going to Last Chance Ranch or I'm going to be doing something around Martin Luther King or they are, then I want that opportunity to go to all my kids in all three middle schools, but I can't. I know that I can't already because I I do some um, community service at Central already and I will have more than enough kids I can. I think you would need an advisor that's moving the program, you know, in all three middle sure. schools. So you need a you would need an advisor per middle school. And and someone's already reached out to me at North and heard about some of the service that I'm doing and asking me if there's something that they could get in and I would strong arm, strong arm someone at South. <laughs> Don't I worry, no this is going. <laughs> no, no, I think I agree that there needs to be someone in each school if it's going to be done. You know, I agree. Um, I agree. But I, I love the idea. I, I wouldn't say no to any kind of service program for the students. So I think it's, I think it'd be a great idea for them to try it in the middle school. You can't start them too young. No, side. I agree. And we do have a lot of our students, like we're lucky at Central, we have the community center right around the corner and we do um, walk, up, walk our kids over and decorate for dances and do at least it's two community activities with them um, every year. We do um, tea and tap. We do one, either we take our students there and the other that we always do is lunch and a show that we treat the seniors and whoever wants to come for a small donation um, to lunch and a show at Central. So it, it, it's well received. And the kids are excited about it. Good, thank you. All right, so if everybody's okay with moving this recommendation, we'll, we'll put it to the board meeting. And I just wanted to make a comment, to, ooh, since we're on the topic of service um, today, I had the opportunity to go, and something that I think sort of fits into this category, ways for our students to serve people in the community. Um, our guitar building class, which is renowned throughout the state, um, some of the students in that class participated in the governor's STEM competition, and their project was to make an electric guitar and an acoustic guitar. 
they decided to make it with Pennsylvania hardwoods. They used all Pennsylvania materials to make these guitars. And then they chose two veterans who um, suffered from PTSD. And they donated the guitars to these two people. And so today they had a ceremony, a reception in the cafeteria here at the high school. And the two gentlemen came to receive their guitars. And it was, um, sorry, it was a very moving experience to see them receive that. And I thought it was just another way that our students can serve the community. I thought it was something kind of different and, uh, that sets Penridge apart. Uh, and I thought it was really nice. The, the men loved their guitars. They specialized them. The acoustic one had a keystone at the top of it. They had their name. Each man's name was on the guitar somewhere. And they were just really touched by it. And the one man said that these kids will always be precious to them. And that just touched my heart. So I wanted to share that during our service talk. OK. Now I have to get back to the other agenda items. Second grade swimming recommendations with Ms. Deb Brady and Mr. Jacob Grant. Good evening, everyone. Um, hope you're having a great night. I am here to talk about, as you said, second grade swimming. I was a member of the elementary school scheduling committee, and we were charged with looking at the program to make some recommendations for the future of the program. So uh, the current program is, current, is available for all second grade students. It runs for seven weeks. Each classroom goes in the entire school district, so that's one of the really great things. However, because of getting to the high school, we need to have the kids pack up and be ready to go at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Normally, their June classes don't start until 2.35. So one of the challenges is when you're scheduling to make sure that you have enough flexible time so that your physical education teacher has done all of his or her classes so that they can be ready to go by 2 o'clock which means even though it is only seven weeks out of your schedule, you actually have to look at that from the very day one so that you have flexibility because you can't cancel the classes for other students. Um, in addition to that, because they are leaving at two o'clock instead of at approximately 2.35, they um, are losing instructional time. And if you take that 35 minutes that they lose, over the seven week period, they lose about 245 minutes a school year of instructional time, which adds up very quickly. In addition, we have been looking at one of the recommendations of the scheduling committee is trying to find time where we can give our students more individualized time for enriching the curriculum or also remediating the students during that time. And when we were looking at how can we get the staff to support that, we thought, well, we could include the special area teachers when they're not teaching. So if our physical education teachers didn't have to leave early, that would also be some more time that they could fit in and work with our students across grade levels. The second thing that we looked at was the cost of transportation. And believe it or not, it costs